Hello everyone and welcome to an Arma 3 Eden Editor tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to make a working Arma 3 multiplayer mission. Uh, this is just going to be the basics, it's nothing advanced, nothing for like placing AI down and stuff. This is just to get you to a basic Zeus mission for Arma 3 and multiplayer for anyone who wants to host those. To start off, we're going to be going to the single player tab on your home screen. You're going to be going to your editor. From here, select any map you'd like to play your mission on. Uh, we're going to go with Altus today since it's just a tutorial. Alrighty, to start off for tonight, uh, we're going to go ahead and press M on your keyboard. This will open up the map in Eden Editor. You can see your camera right here. You can click and drag it if you so wish. However, uh, you don't have a good computer like I do. Or if you just want to get somewhere quick, you can just scroll into where you want to go, and then your middle mouse button, click it, and boom, the camera moves. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just make this here. Uh, we'll do a basic spawn over here. What? So we'll do a basic spawn right here. Uh, while we're going into this, let me go ahead and go over the actual movement control. So WASD, obviously, to ground Q is to go up. And Z is to go down. Uh, let's say if we place something down here. Like Spike. There we go. Uh, place something down here. You can hold and drag it around. And if you hold it and hold Alt, you can also adjust the height by going up and down while holding Alt and hold click on it. Now. Basics parts of this. Uh, that's the basics of your movement. You can also right click uh, anywhere you'd like and you can click to go here, play from here, etc. Now for the top part, let's say we go ahead and grab a object. Let, let's just go with the house for now. Um, this is obviously your normal selection. You can drag stuff around with it all up and down. This right here is your translation widget. Uh, this is actually used quite a bit if you're building compositions. Same controls apply. Obviously, you have a little more of a precise grid now. And drag this around with this. If you're making precise compositions, you will be using this nine times out of ten. Over here is your rotation widget. Now, you can rotate things with this. You just gotta hold shift down and move your mouse around as you click. There's also the rotation widget though, so say you need it to be a little more precise, you can move it right here, and if you look, it'll actually tell you uh, what's the rotation axis is for it. So that's the same thing for when you move it. If you look closely, you can see that it says 0 0.1, 1.0, etc. for the movement pattern. Here's your area scaling. This is really not something you're not going to ever use. I mean, you'll use it once in a while, but it's not very important. I'll go over that in another tutorial. Uh, let's go over to Taj. I'm sorry, vertical mode, surface snapping. So obviously vertical mode will actually make it so you can go through all these things. And when you're moving it up, it doesn't clip. So this is the biggest thing. When you're holding alt, it won't clip when you're out of vertical mode. Now when I toggle that, it clips again to the ground. Now if we do surface snapping and toggle that, that will just make it so it doesn't snap to anything. So like this surface, it won't snap to nothing like that. Disable both of them, however, you get both of those things. And if you're making precise compositions, this is going to be very useful because Arma with terrain and not all of it being flat, you're going to want it to be able to go through stuff. So let's say I'm making a wall out of this giant house here on this hill. I can go ahead and do that right there because if I don't do that and I have these enabled and let's say I just move it a tiny bit it goes like that and you don't want that so back over here next part is going to be the translation grid this is actually quite useful when you don't want to when you want everything to be even so what you're going to be able to do you can click this little drop down right here Let's say I want it to be one meter translation. It's already on that by default. You can toggle on and off by just pressing this. But what this will do is that since it's enabled, it'll move 
the object one meter, two meters, however much. It's pretty much snapping at that. And it's the same thing for up and down anywhere you put it. This is just the rotation version of it, so let's say I want a 15 degree rotation. It'll automatically snap 15 degrees. Going on from there, let's go ahead and get down to the actual part of the mission. So now that you know the controls, you can go ahead over here. These are all of your tabs in the editor. If you've ever played in Zeus, it's similar to it, however not exact. Uh, obviously your individual objects are going to be right here, so any individual AI or player modules, uh, vehicles, exactly like the Zeus interface. Over here is your props section, or aesthetic object section. This is where you can get props like walls, all of that fun stuff that you can explore on your own. Obvious civilians, all that fun stuff. Over here are your group compositions. This is all the default compositions, whether you have mods or not enabled. So as you can see, I do have 3CB. Uh, I also have RHS and stuff. Uh, this is due to my modern pack for my modern EDA I run. Uh, this is the Op4 tab, same thing. All these AI tabs are the same. Civilians are very rare that you'll actually see a composition pre-made for groups of them. Typically, you'll have to do them one by one. Now, over here in the prop section, if you want default built compositions, you can go into here and select them. So say, I want a checkpoint from just default on a three or ace. Right here, ta-da. And this is just a civilian checkpoint. And Cup has their own things. Arma has great outposts and stuff that you can use if you don't want to build your own. Uh, there's stuff like Audacity and all of that that are really nice and they're just really easy to place down, give your players something to go after. Roblox, all that fun stuff that are great to add to missions. Now over here is your custom compositions. These are going to be very important if you're going to be a constant mission builder because this is where you can collect all of your data or all of your compositions for your spawns, everything like that in here. As you can see, I have a spawner in here. I have an air spawner. This is actually a scripted spawner that you can go up to I made. And when you put this code in here, you can walk up to it in game and interact with it. And on this helipad, uh, you'll spawn any vehicle that is on that laptop. So it'll spawn on this invisible one, and then this is just to mark where it is. That's another tutorial for later. Going on from there, we also have things like the arsenals and stuff. That is a huge thing you want to keep. Uh, as, say, you want to run missions constantly, you don't want to have to go make new arsenals every time. So, you can do what I did, and these are full arsenals here. I'll include their code down in the description. I'll also go over how to insert their code, but if you double click on them, this is an ace and regular armor arsenal code. So, you put these in your init and you press OK, and then boom. This will now be an arsenal when you load up into the game. As for these med kits, these are first aid kits. These are from my friend Devil, uh, who made this script. But this will actually give you a full ace heal. Uh, I will include all the code for those in the description below, but let me go over how to actually apply that. So, let's go ahead and grab a supply box. And let's say... Um, let's say if I want to make it a simple object. This is also something I'll go over next, but simple objects will make it much easier for your FPS and your server to run things. It pretty much makes it a dummy object. It has no interaction or anything, it literally just has a hitbox. So, place that in there. Well, this thing won't be able to move or anything in Zeus and the players can't move it, nothing. It's completely interactable, it's like a terrain object almost. Now for the player slots. So, if you already look on here, I obviously have a slot composition. Uh, this is just my unit slot composition I use. Uh, however, I'm going to show you guys how to make one from scratch. So, you can make it neat like this one is. I'm place it down for you. This is a slot composition that I made. Uh, you can save compositions by just clicking on an object or a group of them. Also, by the way, drag and hold a box, this will select everything in the box. But you can click on an object, right click, and do save custom composition. This will make it go into this section here. 
save as a composition and boom you're done but these are actual player slots these are not ai or anything these are what the players will load into these obviously are my zoo slots right here and then here are all my normal players and stuff and then this is a fortify module for asex going on uh, let's go ahead and get down to actually making these things so let's say I just want to make them an Afghan national so what's this place on a combat medic you'll see that when you first place down a player or an AI in general it has this red circle around it that's because it's playing it as a single player right now so you want to deselect this if this is going to be a player slot and make it just playable so that way when you start your mission they're not automatically assigned to that slot and it's just an optional slot for your player Here's your role description. This description can be used to actually, what you'll see on the multiplayer screen when you're loading into your server, this is what you'll see in the slot. So if I say this is a medic, your players will select this to be a medic. Now to make this AI a medic, you go down here to unit traits and do click is medic and also make sure you go to ace options and click either regular medic or doctor depending on what you want to make them. There's also an option for engineer, so if you have any pilots or anything, or anyone that might be running, uh, let's say air, or I'm sorry, a tank, you can go ahead and make them an engineer, advanced engineer, all that fun stuff. You can also make them handcuff, surrender, EOD. EOD would make them a specialist if your ace is set up like that. So, sorry. Let's go ahead and make this a just a regular medic slot. So, that is a player slot and it's all said and done. It will spawn in with everything you see on it. It won't spawn in default. So what you put on your players is what they'll spawn in with, which is part of the reason why you're always going to want an arsenal somewhere during your missions, unless you want them to only have what they spawn in with. So arsenals are fairly easy to make. Arsenals, you can go into here. I will leave a script in the description for both the ace arsenal and virtual arsenal, and then also the two of them together. And very simply, if you want to ever put a script in an object, you just double click your object. And under the init object, you'll go ahead and place your script, and then press OK. Now there's also another way to make this a regular arsenal, not an ace arsenal. Ace arsenal you'll have to either do through script and such, but to make it a regular arsenal, if you just delete this, Scroll down here to special states, you can also enable simulation and stuff. Under equipment storage, you can go ahead and just click this box here and it'll make it a regular arsenal. This is a vanilla Arma 3 arsenal, this is not an ace arsenal. Down here you could actually make an ace arsenal however, because you can add just about anything you'd like in terms of whitelist and stuff, or you can just add a blacklist and it'll add a full ace arsenal for everything. So the blacklist say you don't want them to have an AK, boom. They won't get the AK, and then they can get everything else, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and just quickly, I have a limited arsenal that I made for my unit. Uh, you can go ahead and make your own, this is just my limited and ace arsenal. This is just my limited and ace arsenal, so go ahead and rotate you, make it nice and even. And sometimes you'll also see a glitch where your stuff will go back into global mode. I personally always keep mine in local. You can switch from global to local right here. But if you keep it at local, it'll only load... I'm sorry, it, the movement access will go with your object. So, to copy and paste objects, say if you just want to copy and paste it real quick, not in the exact position, just control C, control V, ta-da. Now, to hard copy, hard paste, and also make it so it's in the same position, control C, and then control shift C, now hard copy it, then you're going to control shift V. And then you can wrote, or just move it right on out of there. Now, you can do this twice, three times, however much you want, but that is completely on you, the mission maker. Now, let's go ahead and place our slot down and then go over respawn. So, I have my combat medic here, playable, well, let's make him a medic. You're going to go up to here first, and usually I go to general and turn off require DLC, 
as this will sometimes mess up your missions depending on your server settings. Uh, you also want to turn off binarizing your mission scenario file unless you want people to not edit it. Otherwise you can't go into here and remove certain mods that might be corrupt from your mission file directly and you'll have to go load the corrupted mod to remove it. Which can be troubling at times. Also, some of this stuff you might not see. I'll leave a link in the description below. There is a mod called Freedom Editor. It is great for mission making. I highly suggest anyone to use it for uh, anything to do in Eden. It adds a ton of odd, or, I'm sorry, a ton of functions in here that really help out when making it. Now, I usually just always turn the allegiance for the independence off because you can just change that in Zeus if it's a really dire thing. But if you don't want to use Zeus, you can mess with if they're friendly to both, if they're friendly to none. All that stuff right here. That's the basics of general though. Uh, all this other stuff you really don't ever have to worry about. There's this is just a basic loading screen setup. If you'd like to look up a tutorial for that, you may. However, I'm not going to go over it in this video. Next, you're going to go under attributes again. You can go to environment and actually change the time. You can change your weather, fog, all of that stuff under here uh, to whatever you'd like for your mission to start off as. You can go to multiplayer. Multiplayer, unless you want your multiplayer slots to be replaced by AI if they're not selected by a player, turn off enable AI. That will make all the slots that weren't selected by players turn into AI and when they initially spawn it can lead to a huge lag spike and just a bunch of AI sitting at your base. Next, since we're going to go with a custom position respawn and not respawn position to death, I'm just going to click this button and I'm just going to do the marker for respawn. That's all you got to do for here. Respawn delay, I usually set to one second, but you can leave it at zero if you'd like. Just sometimes players would like to see, hey, I actually died. Otherwise, that's it for the multiplayer. Just press OK when you're done with these things, your settings will apply. There's also one thing with respawn. The first part you can do for it is actually a respawn position here. You'll have to go and edit some of the settings under your multiplayer, but for this one you can actually make it so there are tickets and the players can select the respawn point. You can name it, so let's say name it uh, Blue 4, and then I set it to only side that Blue 4 can use. I usually only show it to the side and then notifications that disable, since it can get annoying to see that pop up on your screen. After that just press OK, and boom, you have a Blue 4 respawn down that's selectable. But in order to make this one work, you're going to have to go to your multiplayer again. And then you're going to have to select respawn position. There is also another version of respawn. If we delete this one and we just go and press M, go to your markers and under that go to systems. You're going to go and select your empty. This won't show up on any map except Eden. Under variable name, just type respawn. Now if you would like to make it specifically a blue 4 respawn, you can set it to respawn west. If you want it to be an op 4, you do east. If you want it to be green 4, you do gorilla. So I'm going to leave it as a normal respawn for just global players. And we'll move it right about there. You can also, if you have this widget selected right here, Press M again and you can move it around without having to be in your map. So if you need to move it, say, into the air or something, if you're doing like a boat or a ship, if you're doing star sim, all that stuff, you can just go right into here and move it around like this. Next up, I'm going to go over actually saving your scenario. So you have your arsenals, you have your basic player slot. So to save your scenario, you're going to go to save as under your scenario. Now that you have your arsenal and your player slots, as well as your respawn done, you're going to go to Scenario, Save As, MP Missions, make sure you unclick the binarize the scenario file. This is important. Otherwise, it'll binarize your mission and you can't edit the actual SQF file of it. Now, you can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, I don't suggest using spaces because it makes your file look weird and it's harder to read, but it's up to you. Some of these are the ones I had to go through and approve for my unit, but again, entirely up to you. Uh, so let's say I just named this tutorial E1. Boom. That is done. Complete. 
Next up, you're going to go over to here. Uh, we want to give you a Zeus module on your specific player slot. So let's say you want this specific player to be a Zeus. Uh, we copy this. This is going to be a normal player right here. This is going to be a Zeus. So I can just change this to Zeus. The role description never matters in terms of what you want to be a Zeus slot. Your variable name will. So you, I'm just going to name this Zeus for ease. Now you're going to go to your module section. Down to Zeus. And game master this is the Zeus module for you you double click on it and open it up set the owner to the variable name of that specific AI you just selected so I'm gonna set the variable name to a1 and I'm gonna add all add-ons including unofficial so that way it's not just your vanilla NATO and stuff I really never click this because this will put them in uh, into their interface initially but it's up to you you double click on your player again, variable name, A1. So what this is doing, this is the variable A1, this is the actual owner of it. This is calling the owner A1 and making them a Zeus. Now, when they become a Zeus, you can have them be renamed or display to other players and you can put it as Zeus or you can leave it blank. That is entirely up to you. Those basics done, uh, let's go ahead and test out the mission file. So to test your mission, if it's a multiplayer mission, easily go into here, play in multiplayer. Usually this might take a minute to paint on your computer to get it and test it out. It just really depends on what your setup is. Now that you're into the game, you can go ahead and press continue. And if you're in too far on TeamSpeak, it will still move you because you're technically on your own server and it activates your plugin. That sometimes happens. Uh, since I had select respawn positions still on, that screen popped up. But if you don't have that on, that usually won't pop up. Now that we're in-game in now, look around, all that. Uh, as you can see, I may have flung a couple arsenals somewhere, so I probably copied and pasted something in each other. But otherwise, everything works fine. We go up to this, the scroll wheel, ace interact, you can do an arsenal. Ta-da! Got a full ace arsenal right in front of you. And now you can go through, scroll what you need. This is my limited arsenal for my modern unit. If you might be interested in this, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, we do do ops and it's a marine unit, however this is just for the uh, armor community as a whole. You go ahead and scroll through, you can mess with all of your stuff. Uh, again, this is a limited arsenal, so this is not uh, going to have all the Op4 weapons and stuff. It's entirely up to you what you want to customize your stuff to have. But, you can move around, you can do every basic thing you need. Do all that, it's just like a normal server. Now when it comes to respawn, let's say I die, but let's say I got like shot in the head or something, I can just respawn right here. And ta-da. Again, I selected select respawn position, and since this is popping up, it won't actually respawn me. So I need to go back into the mission and deselect that under the multiplayer. We'll do that now. To get out of here, just click abort, and then click yes, and then ta-da. Let's click back, and it'll be returned to the Eden Editor. Now that we're back in the Eden Editor, we're going to go to Attributes, Multiplayer. Select respawn position, and click that. And then your respawn will be fixed because we still have this marker down right here. Now, one last thing we're going to go over is the settings. So add-on options will actually be where you can edit some of these settings at. If you're running Ace for your mission, you're always going to want to mess with these settings. Advanced ballistics and stuff is something you're going to have to go over on your own. However, if you do have a default setting, you can go ahead and just click load from preset and do that if you save it. But if you need to import something from a document or something that you copied and pasted, just click the import button, click Control v click OK, and it imports it onto here. Then you can click save and save it as a preset. Otherwise, that is the basics of Eden Editor. I'll be making a tutorial going over more of the in-depth look as to things like making AI actually move around, how to use AI properly in Eden, also how to do some minor scripts or just post some actual compositions for scripts. 
Otherwise, I do hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it does help you out in making your future missions. And if I end up playing them, I can't wait. Otherwise, that'll be the end of the tutorial. Have a good night, guys.